how to learn ladder logic programming. We're making this part of the Factory Rat series, specifically discussing learning in the RS Logix 500 arena. So, what is the RS Logix 500 arena? RS Logix 500 was originally introduced as a programming platform that was identical to RS Logix 5 and RS Logix 500 supported the Slick 500 family of processors. When the Micrologix family of processors started to appear, first the 1000, then the 1200, then the 1500, followed later by the 1100 and the 1400, they were added to that programming software. So RS Logix 500 supports all the Slick 500 family and all the Micrologix family. When you're programming any of these, the interface, the graphical user interface is identical, 100% identical, with the exception of the I.O. structure and the instruction set. Some of these processors support more instructions than the other. But if you learn to program any of these, you can program all of them. A major difference between Slick 500 and Micrologix is the price. Slick 500s typically are more expensive and harder to find because they are becoming obsolete. And in the Micrologix family, they are no longer manufacturing the 1000, so I've kind of grayed that out. If you already own a Slick 500 controller and the license, the software license, RS Logix 500, then you can learn what you need to learn with RS Logix 500 and a Slick 500 controller. But if you don't have that license and that hardware already, the price for RS Logix 500 full software that does the Slick 500s is thousands of dollars. And the software, the stripped down version of RS Logix 500 that only does Micrologix is about $150. The Micro Starter is a stripped down version of RS Logix 500, but the only thing that's stripped down is that you cannot select and create a project using any of the Select 500 controllers. But with Micro Starter, you can select and develop programs for any of these five Micrologix. So, what's the difference between Micro Starter, which I mentioned, and Micro Starter Lite? MicroStarter Lite will only program the 1000 and the 1100. So to clarify, if you have a full license of Arts Logix 500, when you go to select the processor, it'll come up with dozens of choices. All of the Select 500 processors and all of the MicroLogix processors. With MicroStarter, you're only going to come up with the five on the right, 1000, 1100, 1200, 1400, and 1500. With MicroStarter Lite, which is free software, you can only pick from the 1000 and the 1100. Now, I mentioned that the 1000 was no longer being manufactured, but again, if you already have a 1000, then by all means use it and get a copy of MicroStarter Lite. It's still on the Allen Bradley website, but it's tough to find. I don't know if they move it around on purpose because they don't want you to buy 1000s and 1100s, but it's out there. We actually supply it on a disc with one of our manuals. We don't sell the software. We include it as a bonus on a disc with other information if you buy a particular manual. So if you have a Select 500 and you have the software license, you can learn with that. But that's not the first choice unless you already own these things. Micrologic 1000 is discontinued and actually cost a little more than they used to on eBay simply because when they stopped manufacturing them, the people that had them now want a little bit more money in case you own a process and you need to replace a processor. So an 1100 is your best bet if you're going to go with MicroStarter Lite. And the reason that the 1100 and the 1400 have red text instead of the blue is because those are the two newest controllers and they not only support online programming but they also have Ethernet ports. If you don't know what online programming is versus offline programming, Offline programming would be like you want to change the station on your car radio or put in a CD or something. You have to pull off the road, put it in park, then change the station or change the disc. Once it's changed, then you can put your car back in gear and take off again. That is offline programming. You have to take it offline to make changes. Online programming is like you're driving down the road and you want to change the station. 
you just change it. You want Ethernet and you want online programming. If you're going to learn ladder logic diagrams with the RS Logix 500 Arena, then you either want a slick 500 with the 505 processor that has Ethernet, or you want an 1100 with Micro Starter Lite, or you want a 1400 with Micro Starter. But that's a purchase license, not free. There's always a choice between least expensive and most effective. Least expensive is never going to be the most effective, unless money is your only criteria. Remember, there's time, quality, and money in the three-way triangle for everything that you do. What is the least expensive path to learning ladder logic diagrams with PLCs? This is the least expensive package, and that is you need a 1000 or 1100 controller, you need a communications cable, and you need micro starter light, and you need something to learn with, a manual. This is a lab project manual. It's all hands-on learning. It's all step-by-step -step procedures. This particular manual comes with an information disk that besides having user manuals, hardware manuals, some technical data and guides, it also has the free version of micro starter light that you can use to program the 1100 or the 1000. Keep in mind that the 1100 is really the best way to go. It's the most effective of the least expensive because the 1100 has a better instruction set, it has Ethernet, and it has online programming. I cannot emphasize enough that if you're going to take the least expensive route, then you need this type of a manual, you need micro starter light, you need an 1100 processor, and of course you need micro starter light, which there's a copy on this disc. Another thing to consider when you, if you don't already own a 500, 1000, 1100, if you don't already own hardware, you want a controller that uses 24 volts DC to power it. Now you can use one that requires 115 volts DC, and that would mean that you're gonna connect a line cord from your wall outlet directly to this controller. And these aren't necessarily finger safe. Now, if you're a grown adult, you shouldn't electrocute yourself. However, a wall wart 24 volt DC power supply that you plug in the wall for $12 off of eBay or Amazon, and then buy a controller that uses 24 volts, not 115. That's the best way to go of the least expensive. Summary, 1100 BBB or an 1100 that uses 24 volts DC in, and you need either an ethernet cable or one of these PMO2 cables, and you need micro starter light, and you need a lab project manual. An alternative is to use a Micrologix 1400. So this is the most effective, not the least expensive, but it, the what you're paying for more here than the other is micro starter. Micro starter light is free, micro starter is not. You have to buy a license from your local Allen Bradley distributor. A Micrologix 1400, which you see there, has three ports on it. You can't see them, but it's got RS-232, it has the round in connector, and it has Ethernet. You want Ethernet. You want online programming. The 1400 has the best instruction set of everything in the 500 arena. That includes slick 500s and all the Micrologics. It's the best of everything. They're not that expensive to buy used. I've only got one bad one used and that came from China and I just don't buy from that source anymore. But I found them anywhere from $150 up to $300. Then you need a 24 volt DC power supply. That means you're going to have to have a connector that you connect up to your controller that that wall wart can plug into this end of it that you're looking at. And you need a communications cable. Obviously, all computers now have Ethernet, so you need a cheap Ethernet patch cord, a couple bucks. Now, one thing I didn't mention in the previous slide is you need something with lights and switches, at least switches. Now, this is our box that we sell. These are expensive. These are not inexpensive. You can build your own. What you're looking at there is six inputs and six outputs. Obviously, you see six toggle switches. What you don't see is those six pilot lights are also push buttons. So they're LED lit push buttons. Those push buttons are connected in a circuit with each of those toggle switches that give each of the six inputs four states, if you want to call it that. Maintained on, maintained off, momentary on, and momentary off. You can build your own box very inexpensively, but you need some sort of a box with lights and switches on it. So when you write your programs, 
you can operate them. Least expensive or most effective path. And as I said, the best option for a MicroLogic controller is the 1400 with a BXB in the part number. It could be BXB or BXBA. The A means analog, that it's got analog inputs and outputs as well. And that's not a bad consideration if you want to keep on learning and do a little work with analog. And you definitely want one that requires a 24 volt DC power supply. Either of these two manuals will function as a learning platform for any of the RS Logics 500 arena, and that means Slick 500 and any of the MicroLogics. The difference is that the gray and black manual, it was originally written with the MicroLogics, the MicroLogics 1000, and it covers all 70 of the instructions available in the instruction set for the least of the MicroLogix 1000 processors. The orange and black manual does not cover as many instructions, but it covers all of the basic instructions and has many more practical examples, programming examples, than the silver and black manual. So the most effective path is a MicroLogix 1400 of a BXB type with MicroStarter, a license you have to buy this manual. Now, no matter what you do, you're going to have to have license switches and a power supply. One more item in your learning experience. We have dozens of videos on YouTube that cover the lab projects and the general lectures involved with these two manuals. If you look at the website here, there's the orange and black and there's the black and silver. The videos are under virtual classrooms. We have Room 101 is basic electricity magnetism, and if you're not real familiar with electricity magnetism, you really ought to watch these three or something like this on the internet. The second classroom, Room 102, in Introduction to Program Logic Controllers, and it goes through a number of lectures that you can watch, and as you go through these lectures, once you get down to relay coils, to bits and memory, and a little further down, that's when you want to start your lab projects, because the first three here, part one and part two, plus talking about number, number systems, and relay coils to bits, that really prefaces what you're going to learn in the lab. But you want to continue to watch all of these lectures. If you click on one of these lectures, it's going to take you right to YouTube, and, and if you if pause, it's going to start you right back where you ended. If I close this, you're going to be right back in the classroom to go to the next lecture. Then you want to go to either MicroLogix 1100 Lab Project Discussions or MicroLogix 1400 Lab. Depends on whether you have the black and silver or the black and orange. These are older lectures and they're broken into three groups of basics, advanced one and advanced two. And they're in order. Now some of these are quite old, meaning that they were they were recorded a long time ago and the software wasn't very good and the microphone definitely wasn't very good. If you happen to choose the fourteen hundred, in other words you have the black and orange manual, which is your best choice, you go there and there are all of the lectures lab discussions and lectures surrounding that manual. Now these aren't the general lectures that were back here in Program Logic Controllers. So these are the general lectures for any PLCs. So you want to start here and then when you get a manual and you get your hardware then you can start doing the lab projects from either the black and silver or the black and orange. Now there's also the manual for Micro 800. I don't recommend that because that software and that programming is totally different than anything RS Logix. And if you want to get a job working on PLCs in a factory, you want to learn RS Logix 500 and 5000. So right here is your RS Logix 500. This is your best choice with a Micro Logix 1400.